Maybe you all take your seats if you would and stand and we're going to uh, pray. I want you to take your seat and then stand up. Yes. Just don't take your seat home with you. We need these chairs. <laughs> Good to have you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I've got your attention. I just want to remind you during our summer hours, we will not be having Sunday night service and um, we will not be having potluck until the end of August. So just to let you know that we are planning a get together in the park again this year. And I'm not sure exactly what month that's going to be. It's either going to be July or August. It might be our August potluck that we'll have it down at the riverfront like we did last year. We usually like to wait till it's about 100 degrees to do it, you know, just to make it kind of eventful for everybody. We will have a heat stroke prayer line. So uh, <laughs> we want to make sure that. We... Yeah. Amen. Also, continue to pray for Cindy's here this morning. My cousin Cindy uh, Madden, her husband passed away last week. We had his funeral yesterday, but continue to pray for Cindy and the family. Her son, uh, Kelly, just wrote something absolutely marvelous yesterday for his dad. It was just really, really wonderful. So, All right, grab the hand of the person next to you. We're going to pray and jump into worship this morning. We're going to pray for our worship leader. He not feeling real great this morning, so pray for Brett. We're going to pray that he just gets lots of strength and energy that he didn't know he had. Amen. So, Father, we come together in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the good things you're doing. We do pray for comfort for the Madden family this morning. <clears throat> we also pray that Brett will just have all kind of energy, more than he could ever imagine. Father God, you said in your word that when we are at our weakest, that's when your strength can be made perfect in us. And I know he's struggling today, so thank you for blessing him, touching him now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you for it. We thank you for it. Now, Holy Spirit, come in here and just move in us. We just surrender ourselves today. Refresh those that need it today, O oh God. Bless them with a reinvigoration of the Holy Spirit today. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. All right, let's worship the Lord. Fresh outpouring 
Unleash a fresh outpouring. Oh, yes, God. Pour out we of your spirit. A fresh outpouring. Let every heart be open for this. Unleash a fresh outpouring. There is fire stirring in our bones. A shout is rising, rising up inside. So the earth can come and fill our hearts. Our voice is calling, calling us to life. We need a fresh outpouring. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 
There's an army rising up. Yes, there is. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Break our chains, Lord, this morning. Bless you, Lord. Break our Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give you honor today. Thank you for breaking the chain of addiction off of us this morning, Lord. Release us, O oh God. Let every bad attitude fly away in the name of Jesus. Something that would fill my empty soul. So believe a lot. Choose darkness over Yes. And I will stand in light.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you Jesus choosers. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Worship the Lord in this song this morning.
Ah, hallelujah. All struck wonder at the mention of your name. Say it again, filled with wonder. Jesus, Jesus. Filled with wonder at the mention of your name. All struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah, hallelujah. I 
say this morning, how long will you not surrender those things that trouble you? You're worrying and you're fretting, says the Lord. Do nothing except pull you down and make you sick. But the Lord your God would say today, surrender to me. Surrender to me your will and those things that drag you down because you cannot change them. But all you can do is make yourself miserable and the Lord is not pleased when you make yourself miserable. He would say this morning, surrender your hurt, your pain, your disappointment. Surrender your inability to control even though you try. 
For the Lord your God is in control. Do you not believe this? For He is your God. He loves you and His heart is to draw you to know Him more. To know me more, says the Lord. So surrender this morning. Give it up. Wave the white flag. Quit trying to make things the way you want them. They won't be that way. Surrender and let God's will be foremost in you this morning, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word. We yes. surrender the day, this day, God, to you. Maybe this morning you've got things you're struggling with. You need to come down here on your knees and you need to surrender it to God this morning. There's many of you that need to surrender to the Lord. Your confusion, your discouragement, your misunderstanding, your inability to control. You're not going to control people. You may try, but it won't work. Surrender yourself to the Lord this morning. <laughs> Go ahead and sing that verse again. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Father God. Thank You, Your people are hearing and responding, Lord. Bless You, Father. Yes. mercy and grace Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Bless them, Lord God, as they surrender today. Surrender their lives to You, Father. Let You become Lord of their life. Let them acknowledge You that You're in control. And Father knows best. I thank You for Your work flowing through them. Your Spirit dealing with them. I say, surrender all to You today, God. Surrender all worry. All low self-esteem. Surrender Your past. It's a new day. It's a new hour. The Lord God's drawn You to a new life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that these women of God will surrender their heart, surrender their hurt, surrender their grief, surrender God. In the name of Jesus, let that peace of God fill up that void right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for a surrendered heart. Oh, God. Know that all these tests and trials you've gone through are going. They're going on because the Lord is asking you to surrender yourself to Him, your will. Insist not on yourself, but on His will. Hallelujah. And the peace of God will flood your life. And the peace of God will overtake you as you surrender in the name of Jesus. Lord, as they surrender grief and disappointment, Father, I thank You right now for a touch of Your Spirit healing and ministry, strength and life to broken hearts now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Son, you need to give up. Quit trying to do it yourself. You're going to fail every time. But if you'll surrender it to God, the Lord's just waiting for you to say, Father, I can't do this. I can't figure this out. The Lord would say, when you do that, that'll be a new day for you and a new start. Until you do that, you're going to struggle mightily. He's after not only your heart, He's after your will. Surrender it to Him in the name of Jesus. Thank You, Father. Oh, God, thank You for Your daughter as she surrenders her will and her heart to You, Father, in the name of Jesus.
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I think God accomplished some things this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'll tell you, there's a great, great peace in surrendering and giving yourself to God without any reservation. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys can be seated if you can for a second, and we'll uh, take up this morning's offering. Oh, okay, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Praise God. Praise God. Hope you worship the Lord with us today. This is a great time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Joshua led the people of Israel to conquer a city that, was, that had high walls and a great army, and he had a bunch of teenagers that didn't know what they were doing, God told Joshua how to fight the battle. Now, I'm going to give this to you this morning. Hear this. Okay, The Hebrew word for hear means not just to listen, but it means to listen with action, to listen with response. He told Joshua, he said, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets and the ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. When they blasted praise and worship, the presence of the Lord, the ark of the covenant was with them. Guess what happened to Jericho? It says not only that, but it says that their hearts of the people of the city melted because they were so f afraid of these teenagers walking around not knowing what they were doing, going, praise God, praise God, walking around, the mount, walking around this city. And then all of a sudden, God blows it away. The troubles in your life will not be conquered by you sitting around thinking about them and trying to figure out how to get things to work the way you want. I sense this morning a lot of you are really struggling with control. You need to let control go to Him and do things His way, even if it sounds goofy. This sounds goofy. I was never in the Army or the Marines, but I know we've got a, a Marine and an, uh, someone that was in the Army in here today. I'm sure they didn't brief you guys. Now, we're going to go out to battle, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the Army marching band with all the singers, and they're going first. I'm sure if you were going to run into battle, you know, D-Day was 40 years ago on uh, June 6th. They didn't go into battle with a bunch of people blowing horns and singing, right? I'm sure they would have loved to have had that happen because then they wouldn't got shot first. But God does things differently than man does. And He's saying to you this morning, if you want your life to get better, start giving me thanks for the life you got now. Did you hear that? Hallelujah. So when the people shouted and the priests blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, they shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. It didn't just fall down, it fell down flat. You know why it fell down flat? God was making a way for them to walk right in. Isn't that neat? They probably had a moat or something around it. It didn't matter. God flattened it flat so they could just walk. They had a street paved ready to go. If you'll do this, if you'll praise God in the midst of your trouble, not worry about it, Right? Not nurse and rehearse. If you don't nurse that problem, you don't rehearse that problem, but you start saying, okay, thank you, Father, for getting me through this thing. I don't know how you're going to do it. And you'll hear the Holy Spirit, here's how. Just like I told Joshua and Israel, start giving me thanks and praise in the midst of your storm. We sang this morning about the chains, right? Hallelujah. I can go to you in the book of Acts. Paul and Silas got chained in the deepest part of the dungeon. They took after they beat the snot out of them. Hallelujah for doing the right thing. And we think since we do the right thing, everything ought to just be all flow natural like, you know. But they took them down there and they put them in stocks in the lowest part of the jail, in the darkest, dungiest, stinkiest part that they never cleaned. Yuck. These are two men of God that could have reacted differently, but you know what they did, right? About midnight. They could hear them all throughout the jail. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord my soul. 
I'm so happy I'm down. No, he didn't. they weren't happy they were down in the dungeon. But I'm so happy you're setting me free. My chains are gone. You know what happened, right? God sent a gigantic earthquake. Broke the chains, broke the prison, broke it all. You want to get free from being discouraged? Start giving Him thanks and praise. You want to be free from having a bad attitude? Start giving Him thanks and praise. This sounds simple, but it is hard to do when you're angry, frustrated, hurt, victimized, on and on. Amen? When you feel rejected, it's not from Him. He loves you and accepts you just like you are. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, praise God. You're ready to give your offering this morning. I wrote mine out and left it in the checkbook. So I got a little distracted by praying and stuff, darn it. Anyway, if you've got your offering, lift it up before the Lord. We're going to sow this as seed into good ground and believe God for a great harvest in this area. Father, we thank You now for those that are giving today. Lord God, I pray a mighty blessing to come to them as they give in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not the amount. God, it's from the heart. We thank You this morning that You're going to bless our VBS coming up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next week. That Lord, as we give, You're going to bless and move and work in this area and draw many children to come to know Jesus this week. We thank You for blessing Pete. He's doing what He's called to do. You're anointed. Uh, anointing Him is, is all over Him. We thank You for blessing Him. Now God, bless those that give. Press down, shaken together and running over. Let it overflow into their life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, the, the TV's on up here, but there is. it says the HDMI is not connected. I don't know, Shane, what that means. but uh, So I don't see the announcements that he may have up here. If you want to receive the morning meds and the prayer line, let me know. The monitor's on. but Yes, we do have many sign-up sheets over here. If you'd like to sign up to receive the morning meds, they're back there on this table. We have water baptism coming up July 9th. If you need to be water baptized and you haven't been, there's a sign-up sheet for that. Um, there's sign-up sheets for everything in there. If you need to get your house painted, there's a sign-up sheet. Well, not really, but I thought that might get your attention. There's a sign-up sheet for an inheritance of a couple million if you want to sign up for that. Debbie's all over that. But there are sign-up things for all kinds of things. If you want to receive the morning meds, if you want to receive the uh, be on the prayer line, you're welcome to do that. Amen. Also, uh, yes, if you'd like to donate to, to the blessing room, an announcement about the blessing room. If you want to come and help work next Saturday morning, Shane and anybody that wants to come and help, 7 o'clock Saturday morning, they're going to be on the roof before it gets hot. Thank you, Shane. He got this thing running. Uh, if you want to come help, what we're going to be doing, he's going to be doing a lot of the pre-work this week. He'll have a lot of it ready to go. All we need to do is get about five or six people, some of you ladies that want to get up there and stretch it out, go ahead. And uh, then we will get the uh, rubber. We're going to take it all the way down, I think, to the beams, right? Yeah, so uh, we're going to take it all the way down, get rid of all the rotten stuff. We've got all the new stuff down there that was donated. Over $5,000 worth of materials donated. I mean, that just blows me away. Amen. You can give God a hand for that. That's wonderful. Now, those that are on the pastoral committee know we were prepared to pay for that. We had money saved just for that reason. Uh, but God said, no, I don't want you to use that. I'm, I'm going to do it this way. Amen. His way is always the best way. Amen, because He is Yahweh. What else we got, Shane? Celebrate Recovery meets Friday at 6. Is it Tuesday at 6 still going on? So Tuesday and Friday at 6, Celebrate Recovery will meet. Um, the Tuesday meeting is primarily for females, and the Friday meeting is primarily for males. We've kind of split them up. Honestly, that's the way that it's supposed to be done. We just never did that. We just did it as the Lord led us, and I think it was pretty good. Amen. Oh, yeah, don't, that reminds me, Wednesday, if you can get here by 5.30, you get free dinner. We're having hot dogs, chili dogs, potato chips here at 5.30, absolutely free. Amen? 
So, yes, I've already been told I can't eat the chili. Also, we have a special guest speaker Wednesday night. He's world-renowned. Actually, Gary Kroll is going to be speaking out of Joshua for us on Wednesday night. So thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget that VBS is this weekend. All right? It'll be from 6 to 8 on Friday and Saturday, and then they'll be taking the Sunday morning service next Sunday. Yes? Baby shower, yeah. And blessing day. We have blessing day Saturday at 10. I know the guys are going to be down there, so we'll have you'll We'll, we'll do double duty, some of us. Friday afternoon, they're going to pack boxes at 2 if you'd like to come and help do that. And then somebody's having a baby. I don't remember who that was. I think she's here today. Yes. If she can get up out of the chair, she needs help. Amen. This is Jenna. When do you do? July? July 18? All right. So the, so the baby shower will be for her on Saturday at 1. So we have a very, very comfortable, relaxed weekend. Amen. Did I forget anything? Well, the purity dinner is not till the 24th, but hopefully uh, you all will remember that. That's June 24th. The uh, girls and guys that are in the youth group will be making a pledge to God, and I think this is awesome, to stay pure sexually and to not be involved with the, other, the opposite sex in any kind of way until it's time to get married. They're going to have a ring, I think, that we've got for them, right, uh, to give them. And that will be a token of their dedication and commitment. I think that is just absolutely wonderful, and I'm so proud of them for doing that. This is a new start, this purity thing. For those that have not been, God will renew your purity. I do believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, that's not a church function necessarily. You have to be invited by the family of the young people that are going through the ceremony. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. You can bring your other children. And maybe a lock for them too. But I don't know. Anyway, we're going to release the kids to Kids Zone. Bless Connie for doing this this morning. Appreciate it. Coffees are gone and, and uh, we appreciate Connie so much. Okay. Okay. Which other ones have ear infections? Okay. Doesn't matter. Let's just pray for them right now. You ready? Stretch your hands over there. Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke this infection in, my, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, right now for your healing and for a good report, for a good surgery that's successful, and for these hearing ears to be opened. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I believe it's done by faith. Amen. Praise God. So, kids, you're dismissed to Kids Zone. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, um, I wanted to show this to you real quickly, too. Um, the Seelies got this in memory of Scott and, Shane, or Scott and uh, Steve. It's called Your Wings Were Ready, But Our Hearts Were Not. Steve Clanton and Scott Clanton in loving memory. We're going to stick this in the ground out there by the tree and I think secure it so that it doesn't get removed. And uh, this will be going out there. Thank you so much, Seelies, for that. We appreciate that. It's beautiful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I got a short word this morning and we're going to have communion. So if you would stand, we're going to pray and believe God today. Hallelujah. Father you bow your heads. Father, we thank you this morning that, God, your heart's desire is for us to go through life and know you, to know who you are and how you work and how you think and how you act. Because, Lord, as once we know that, we'll see how you want us to act and think. We thank you this morning for giving everyone a hearing ear. Open our hearts to hear what the Spirit of God would say this day. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. This is a new series called The Nature of God. This is part one. And uh, I'm not going to get to all that I have prepared today, but I am going to get to some of this. You know, knowing the true nature of God is vitally important for you to live the right kind of life. Amen? Now, how do we know God? How do we get to know God? One way is by studying. When I first became a Christian at age 19, I had a voracious appetite 
for the Bible. I had a Bible that my mom and dad had in the house. I used it till it fell apart. Then I got another one, and it fell apart. Because I was constantly, I wanted to know. I had a real hunger to know who God was. What happened to me? Because I went to church in Peoria, visited a church very similar to ours. I was from a Lutheran background, and I thought they were all nuts a little bit at first. You know what I mean? It's a lot different when you're used to singing hymns, and the the pastor has robes, and it's very stoic and very, you know, you do this, you do that, you say, you recite this, recite that. And when I got saved, I'm telling you what, I just had such a hunger for God. I had notebook after notebook I filled with thoughts, ideas, and things that God was giving me. I want to encourage you to keep a notebook for yourself, a diary of what you study and what God gives to you to learn. You need to do that. It's something that helps you learn. We learn through study. But I want you to know another big way that God teaches you. Are you ready for this? Through experience. Somebody said one time, what Bible school did you go to? I said, Hard Knocks. I mean, I went through the school of Hard Knocks in in the Scriptures and in life. I made so many mistakes. I bumped my head so many times. And you learn much about God in times of grief. Did you know that? Grief doesn't mean necessarily that somebody died. Maybe something died. Maybe a thing that you were doing died. Maybe somebody you knew, you died to the relationship with them. You had to move on. Can I be honest with you? When I first got saved, I left all of my drinking and drugging friends, and I did not associate with them anymore. I'd go around them sometimes, and you know what I'd do? This is terrible. I'd preach at them. You better stop this stuff. You guys are going to hell in a handbasket. I love you. You need to get saved. You need to know what I know. And they thought I was kooky and stupid. Um, when my cousin jumped into Lake Arlen and broke his neck, first thing I did is went to his bedside. I said, Michael, you need to know Jesus. I know this is terrible what's happened to you, but you need to know Jesus. And he received Christ when I prayed with him. Now, did he always live the way I wanted him to? No. But that's not my deal. That's between him and God. Your life that you live is between you and God, not you, me, and God, or not you and your spouse and God, or not you and your kids and God, or not you and your parents and God, or not you and your best friend and God. When the time comes, when Kelly Madden died last week, there was nobody else with him when he stood at the pearly gates. It was him. And it's you. Hallelujah. Don't be a victim of your own choices. We can learn much about God in times of grief, in times of need, and in times of pain. When we don't think life is being fair and we're being... We live in a society that teaches people when you participate, everybody's a winner. But I wanna, I'm want i here to tell you this morning, listen to me, that's not true. That's a lie. When you get into life, not everybody is going to win. In the Christian life, not everybody's going to win. Your life is what you make it. Oh, I'm a victim, man. It was so... No, you're not. Maybe you were victimized, but you can be a victor over that and not be a victim if you want to be. And you can make better choices for yourself if you want to. There ain't nothing keeping you back from serving God but you. There's nothing keeping you back from experiencing God but you. If you think boating and fishing and nitpicking is more important to you and you spend more time doing that, then you made your choice. Right? Right? Now, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I want you to know this. Christian Assembly had service on Tuesday, Friday, Sunday morning, and Sunday night, and I went to all four of them for years. Not over, not, not a couple of days. Scotty was there too. I went there for about 12 years doing that day in, day out. Lived in Pekin, drove to Peoria all the time. God's looking for some people that have a, a good heart to say, I'm going to be committed. Come hell, high water. Brett today he said, "Man, I am not feeling good. I threw up. I, you know, I'm just not feeling well at all." But and Sarah piped in and said, "Yeah, but you said Michael Jordan played when he was sick." So Brett says, "I'm playing when I'm sick." Amen. Amen. Did he do good today? I thought he did awesome. He told me he said from vomiting so much, his voice actually he was able to reach higher octaves. So there you go. Is that not taking lemons and making lemonade out of them? You know what I'm saying? That's a good. Good thing. That's a good character trait to get developed in your life. Then when life gives you lemons, amen, you make something good out of it. You make sweet lemonade out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Society, like I said, is quick to identify, to encourage people that 
be a victim, be, be, be the one that says, oh, I'm being treated unfairly. Our culture excuses lousy behavior and bad choices because we're a victim. I'm here to tell you this, listen to this this morning. You are responsible for you no matter what happened to you. If a young lady at the age of 10 years old has her dad coming in her bedroom, making her have sex with him till she's 18 years old, can you imagine how screwed up you, that'd make you? That could be an excuse to use drugs. That could be an excuse to be nasty, to be hateful, to be spiteful, to have a bad attitude. Wouldn't you say? Say amen. There's a little hinge right here in your neck. God gave you that just for church. My yours is rusty. Well, we'll squirt a little Holy Spirit in there to get that thing going. Right now, today, she has a ministry that reaches millions of people worldwide. Her name is Joyce Meyer. You may not agree with everything about her life. You may not like her. I don't care. All I know is, is if that had happened to me, I'm not sure I'd be able to stand, let alone preach, let alone do what this woman has done. And she loves to share from her life because she went through so much pain. Now, some of you in here have been through great pain in your life. And sometimes the enemy is going to speak to you. Oh, you know, you were victimized so bad. You don't have to do that, you know. It's so bad for you that you're different. And you know what? It's just a shame, isn't it? And I think you better have a little pity party. Some of you got an outhouse with a pity pot in it, and you sit in it all the time. Get off the pot. Let's go. Amen? I've never seen... I'm going to say this, and please forgive me if you're a person that has been addicted or coming out of addiction. I don't care what it is. Addicted people are the most selfish people I've ever seen. If I can't feel happy every moment, I'm going to take these hitters. I'm going to do my one hitter today, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to... I'm, and I'm going to, you know... Because I gotta feel good all the time. Oh, baloney! I get up in the morning. I'm 64 years old. I, I got creaks and cracks and crumbles, man. Give me a break. I don't feel good all the time. Hallelujah! I get up sometimes on Tuesday and I think I gotta go in there and see the staff today. It's not their fault. It's my bad attitude I'm talking about. Are you hearing me? We do argue about the time. You know they. The other day they came in and took a break. Right when they came, I was like, what is this all about? I tease them a lot because, you know, they're not paid. They're volunteer. But I tell them all the time that, you know, you've got a 90-day review going on here. You know what I'm saying? I'm writing stuff down. Your review's coming up. <laughs> God doesn't want you to be a victim. Can you get this this morning? Quit crying about things that are unfair. Do you hear this this morning? Things are never going to be fair. Well, he got to pitch and I didn't. I've been at church for 10 years and I've always flushed the toilet every morning. And you're letting somebody else do it. Oh my God, my life's going down the toilet. Listen, let's grow up, get a backbone. Amen? It's not about you. It's not about you getting to do what you want. Right? Yeah, but we've done it that way all the time. I don't care if we did it that way since Jesus was born. We're going to do it the way the Holy Spirit says to do it. Some of you are going to go through a test where there's something you've done for the Lord and God's going to say, not today. And you're going to do this when He says that. And stick out that lower lip. You know what the Holy Spirit's going to say? Wow. Okay. When you get done, give me a call. Our culture excuses lousy behavior and bad choices as someone else making us victims. Did you hear that? And God, where is God in all of this? You've got to understand some basic principles about God to know what He's like and what He wants you to do. First of all, this is huge. Some people don't believe this, but God gives everyone a will. He does not interfere with us when we decide things. We used to have a lady that came to church. Her name was Joanne Young. I love Joanne. Some of you know who she is. You miss her too. She uh, was addicted for many, many years. But she told me one time that her father had abused her, and she remembers this like it was yesterday, sitting in the bathroom, crying her heart out. And she looked at me one time, and she said, where was God when I was doing that? I said, 
Joanne, he was right with you with his arm around you crying too. And when I told her that, she said that changed the way she looked at her life altogether. That wasn't a big deal, but it was to Joanne. God needs you to know you've got a will. So do other people. They're going to choose to hurt you. They're going to choose to use you sometimes. Are you ready for that? Sometimes they're going to be people that you love. Sometimes it'll be people in church. Some of you may have been victimized by a pastor. I was. Not once, but twice. I know what it's like to get hurt by somebody in ministry. I know what that's like. I've been there. He lets us decide, even if we choose wrong, hurtful, and selfish things. If you want to walk off the edge of that cliff, God's not going to stop you. But when you fall to the bottom of the pit and you break your leg and your arm and your heart hurts, He'll be there to help you get back up. This is a fundamental idea to learn about God. His nature is not to force or push, but to encourage, to draw or entice us to return to Him the love He's given us already. Amen? I read this thing the other day on Facebook, and I'm not going to remember all of it, but somebody wrote this to his girlfriend. I love you. You're the light of my life. I can't be away from you without thinking about you every second. You are so wonderful to me. You're my all in all. My focus in my life is you. You're everything to me. And I thought, man, God, if I could just get that kind of love for you, I'd be be out of a world of hurt. I I will tell you this, that love for that person is misplaced because the first thing that's going to happen is she's going to hurt him. Then what do you do? i got three quick points. I'm not going to get to the big one today, but I'll try to do that next week. But he loves us like a real parent might do. I'm talking about real, maybe not the parent you had, but I mean a real parent that really loves and cares for their kids. That's how Father God is. Number one, he will inform you. God doesn't want you to be ignorant. He will inform us. Amen. Did you put that scripture up there too? There it is. I was going to have to read it because I didn't type it out this morning. Here's what Isaiah 55 says about God. Here's what God says to you this morning. Hey, guys, my thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't think like you all do. Nor are your ways my ways. You guys live the way you want to, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Holy mackerel, it's like that? I'll never get this then. Right? It's never going to happen. For as the rain, But then God says, here's the answer, my family, my people that I love. And let me tell you this. There is no one that God loves more than you this morning. You guys are an awesome, awesome group of people. Did you hear me say perfect? No. But you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are God's chosen. Let's not be His chosen frozen, but you are God's chosen people. He loves you. He's put you together. I think you guys are wonderful. Well, I think you'd be happy about that. Hey, pastor told me today I was wonderful. He didn't tell me I stunk at all. Hallelujah. He will inform you. And here's what he says. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and doesn't return there but waters the earth, he's talking about his thoughts, his ways, his spirit, his will. The snow comes and doesn't return there but waters the earth and makes it do what? Grow things. You can't grow things without knowing God's will. You can't grow without knowing God's thoughts. You can't grow without going, knowing God's ways. Right? His ways are this. Don't be a victim. Quit crying about things being unfair. Amen? Y'all happy? Still love me? Bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall what? My word be that goes from my mouth. It will not return to me void. It will not return. And that word void means without bearing fruit. So His words being poured out in you. That's how you get to know Him. It shall accomplish what I please and it will prosper in the thing which I sent it. Ooh, I'll tell you what, that's a good word this morning. So how do you know Him? He sends His word like rain and snow into your heart so that you might grow. 
Amen? Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to be ignorant. And there's a lot of ignorant Christians. I've been there. I don't want to go back there. Ignorantville. I went through Ignorantville. Population, I don't know how many. There's a lot there. When I drove through, first thing I did, I said, man, God, you must love ignorant people because you made so many of them. And the Lord, you know what the Lord said? Yeah, and you're one of them, buddy. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's good to hear the truth, even if it rattles your cage a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, on TV and stuff, they can say, oh, God loves you and everything's going to work out wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Just send me your money and keep me popular and everything's going to... Did I say that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Listen, man. God wants people that are tough and strong, committed. They're going to make it through this thing and they're going to be faithful. They're going to be at church. They're going to get up in the morning be at church. Not the church here. The church. They're going to have church themselves because you are the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when I get up in the morning, it's, oh, God, would you please help me wake up? Holy mackerel, I got... I got stuff on my eyes, stuff on my mouth, stuff in my nose, and stuff on my attitude. Help me break it off this morning, God. And I hear the Holy Spirit said it's broke. Thank you, Jesus. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Somebody texted me this morning and says, How you doing, brother? I said, Praise God, I'm ready to go. We're going to have some stuff going on in church today. Amen. Number two, He will discipline us. This is the part people really love. See that guy giving his... Now, little Henry, don't do that. He will discipline us. Hebrews 12, 7 and 10 through 11. I don't know if you got those two because I'm going to read them again. Ooh, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as His children for what children are not disciplined by their father. Wow, this is huge. Most of you were raised in parental households that were not what they should be. So you have no idea what real true discipline from God really is. You think if God disciplines you, He's rejecting you, and that's not true. It actually is just the opposite. Right? I hate to use the same stories. I mean to find a new one, but when CJ was about four or five years old, he kept putting his finger in the the light socket. And I kept telling him no. Now listen, as a parent, he's not my son, but he was my grandson. As a parent, you got two choices when a kid does something like that. You either let him do it or you don't. Is it unhealthy to put your finger in a light socket? Say amen. Right. Hazel likes to lick him. Well, that's not good either. If she ever does that, she'll probably have a big old frisbee on her head. Frizzy hair. What little hair she's got. Yeah. So you don't want your kid to do that, right? Okay. So if you don't want them to do it, you have to then you have to figure out how do I get them to stop doing it. Now, some of you, if you'd have done that, your parental units might have thrown a beer can at you. They might have cussed at you and told you you were worthless. That's not godly correction. That's not godly training. Do you hear that? Maybe that's why God can't hardly discipline you because you think. You're being rejected like the guy who threw the beer can at you. Or maybe they were never there for you. You stuck your finger in the light socket and nobody cared if you got electrocuted or not. God is not a father like that. He cares for you deeply. He sees where you're at and He wants to change you so that you can be where He is inside. So CJ, I told him, I said, CJ, please don't do that. And so he retracted his hand. He didn't do it. A couple days later, he came over. Guess what he did? CJ, I said it a little louder. See, God at first is going to approach you with kid gloves because he wants—he doesn't want you to get startled or alarmed. He's not there to swat you. He's there to gently bring you out of the crap you're doing so that you don't get hurt. Many of you have got both fingers in a light socket by the way you live. And the Holy Spirit is saying this morning, We are justified by faith and nothing. But we are also called to live the right way. Get your fingers out of the light socket. 
Amen. Amen. So the next day, CJ's over, but this time he does this. Let's pretend this is the light socket, and and Scott's going to be me. Why would you? Why do you think he'd do that? He didn't look at the light socket. He looked at me. Yeah, he was wondering what's he going to do this time, because I'm sticking my finger right in there, man. So he goes to do it. I calmly get up. Okay, grab CJ's hand. I said, CJ, I told you not to do that. I smacked his hand. You'd have thought I shot him with a gun. You'd have thought maybe I took a rubber band and just smacked him right in the head with it, man. He was just... You know what I did? I let him cry. Sometimes when you go through stuff and you make bad decisions, putting your fingers in light sockets, and you get hurt, God's going to let you cry. You know why? He wants you to learn not to do it again. Right? That's pretty simple, I think. God's a simple God. I know one thing. He's not confusing. We met somebody at the festival yesterday, and we need to pray for their church. He's a young pastor and his wife, and they're in a church where all they want to do is play religious games. These people see it, and they ask me to pray for them. And they ask me a lot about you guys and about how church is here. But uh, one of the things she said, is she, I love my husband. He's a great preacher, but he uses these big words I can't understand. <laughs> this is his wife telling him this. It was hilarious. Then he would write me notes. I said, yeah, that's great. No, it isn't because I couldn't read his writing either. <laughs> but, uh, oh that's a whole other ball game. Sweet couple. Sweet couple. Pray for them. Just It's a church. Just pray for this couple that's dealing with religious people. So anyway, after a while, uh, of course, CJ would come over to me then. And he gave me a hug and I gave him one. It was after, long after this happened, right? You know what? CJ, is a, well, he, he was pretty smart. I never ever, at least not when he was with me, ever saw him stick his finger in a light socket again. Isn't that a good thing? Amen. And you might have to do that with Hazel. <laughs> well, she's a little younger than... She's a little young yet. She doesn't get it yet. She will. She will. Is there... Yeah, I would put protective plugs for a while anyway. Hallelujah. He doesn't want, God does not want you as a father doesn't or, or a good mother to stay in your soul condition without changing and growing. So, you're afraid to make mistakes. God wants you to make mistakes so that He can show you and correct you so that you can get better. Don't, don't get all pouty over your mistakes. Instead, get all repenty over your mistakes. No pouty, repenty. Okay? What's that mean? Father, I'm sorry I did that again. Doggone it. I, you know what, Father? Sometimes I think I'm the hardest-headed person on the face of this stinking earth. And, you know, God, I just need your help because I need your discipline. You need to discipline me. Hallelujah. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Is this all of that, Shane, or is there another part? God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in what? His holy life. What's His holy life? Just living right most of the time. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but like CJ, it's painful. Some of you, when you get hurt and you're in a bad place because of a bad choice, it's not God smacking you on the hand. You're receiving the thing that you chose to do. And God will let you receive that full force. Oh, you mean He's going to let me? Yeah. Why? So you learn not to do it again. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace by those who have been trained by it. I love that. Number three, this is the last point, he will direct us. I want to be directed of God. I want to know where he wants me to go, not where somebody else wants me to go, or maybe even where I want to go. This might shock you, and I don't mean this as a shock, but there's many times I've asked God, do you still want me to pastor down here at Derby Street New Life Fellowship? I need to know you want me to continue to do this, Lord. I'm not going to just do this because I've been doing it. I want to know this is what you want me to continue to do. You planted me here. You set me here. You've anointed me here to do this work. 
You've enabled me to do this work. You've trained me to do this work. I want to do it, Lord. But I want to do it under your direct command. Amen? And it's kind of a scary thing to pray. Because you know what? As fun as Key West might be or whatever, I want to stay here. I want to bloom where God's planted me. How about you? Amen? That's more than just a good saying. That's true. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't want us to make bad decisions. Did you know that? How many are sick and tired of making bad decisions? Yeah, join the club. He wants us to be smart in our spirit and smart in our soul. He wants us to be disciplined in our thinking, eliminating stinking thinking. Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a righteous man, it says in the King James, are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. Listen to me. Who's righteous in God? Say, I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am right with God because of Jesus. Do you hear that in your soul? Let that resonate in there. You're not standing here this morning and saying, I'm right with God because I'm doing all the right things. Or I'm right with God because I'm in church today. I'm right with God because of my faith and my trust in the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. He wants you to be smart in spirit and soul. This is Proverbs 16.9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs and delights in directing his steps. Amen? He wants us to prosper and be in health, even as your soul... What is your soul? Mind, will, and emotions is prospering. Amen? Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to make bad decisions, but you've got to remember, He gives us the choice... It's up to us to follow. He gives you the choice. It's up to you to follow. Let me give you a few hints. If knowing God and having a great life comes from His Word flowing down like Isaiah said, then that would behoove you to get into the Word as much as you possibly can. I just for you that don't know it, we meet Wednesday night at 6.30 and we have Bible study. If you want to know... Don't stay home. Stay here. Get here. By the way, I thought Wednesday's worship was awesome, Steve. Thank you so much. You're doing a great job with Wednesday night. We had, I mean, I want to come and worship the Lord and hear from Him. Don't you? It's more important to me than, I don't know, picking up daisies or something. And uh, the recovery groups are awesome places to learn more about God. Tuesday and Friday. Amen. Praise God. Huh? I did some preaching. Yeah, it was. It was good Wednesday. That, there was a real anointing there. Stan, let's pray. Amen. Thank you for your attention this morning. We'll start at Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20 uh, in two weeks. I like this. He put that up there. I'm going to read this to you real quick. You don't believe that God gives you a choice? Here it is right in the Bible explaining your choice to you. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. You can choose death so that you and your children may die. Or you can choose life so that you and your children may live. Are you hearing this? This is huge. And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to His voice, and hold fast to Him. Wow. That's a super good scripture right there. We are as obedient to Him as much as we love Him. Bow your heads with me real quick just for a minute. While every head's bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to make sure everybody in the house this morning has received Jesus before. I think you all have. But if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, to come in and live into your heart, to move in and take over your life, if that's you, you've never done that before, raise your hand. Hallelujah. I think it's almost just as important for God's people this morning to realize this today. God's knocking at the door of your heart, how many of you want to say to the Lord today, Father, I want to be more dedicated and more committed to you than ever. Lift up your hands. I see those hands. Father, lift your hand. Keep them up there. Father, just bless every heart this morning that desires to walk with you this week. 
Lord God, let them be more dedicated and more committed to you. In Jesus' name, I want you to repeat this after me with your hands up and your eyes closed. Father God, I commit myself to follow you 100%. Show me, Father, where I'm missing it. And help me to be corrected so that I might walk the right way with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Love you. I want you to have a wonderful Sunday and have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Love you. Oh, no, you're not. I always forget this. Just go ahead. First row, you guys just come and get the elements of communion. Sorry about that, Chief. When you get the elements of communion, just go back to your seats and stand if you would. We're going to take it standing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. So grab the elements of communion, take them back to your seat, remain standing. We'll take communion this, this morning together. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Caleb. Appreciate that. Thank you. Boy, they fill these things to the rim. <laughs> I want to thank Gary and Jan for serving communion this morning, too. Thank you, guys. If you want to serve communion, let us know. You couples or whatever. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, you guys are so beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. He loves you both, all. <laughs> Love you too. Love you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for your word this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. This is my body which is given for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your people this morning, Father. Bless them, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Yes, Father, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They shall grow. Come on, get back here. Hallelujah. Flourish in the courts of our God, growing in grace. They will thrive and bear fruit and prosper. Hallelujah. Majestic and stable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your people this morning, Father.
Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, we give, I got them already. Thank you. Uh, I think Fred has it too. Yeah. Thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does everybody have both elements? You all ready? reminded of a scripture that says don't be overcome by evil but overcome evil by being good and you are good you are God's righteous ones it says in Psalm 92 12 the righteous will flourish like a date palm long lived upright and useful they'll grow like a cedar in Lebanon majestic and stable planted in the house of the Lord growing in grace they will thrive and bear fruit and prosper in old age they will flourish and be vital and fresh rich in trust and love and contentment. They are living memorials to declare that the Lord is right and faithful. How many know God's faithful? He's been faithful to us. One of the reasons I had you stand is because the Lord's Supper was shared on the night of the Passover, and when the Passover was taken, everything was done standing up. You know why? They had to get ready to go. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Hallelujah. We have this little wafer that signifies that bread. The same night in which he was, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, we lift this up to you. Father, thank you for sending Jesus, that his body was broken and destroyed for us, that we might live in the body of Christ. Thank you for the body of Christ this morning. Hallelujah. He said, take and eat this, my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we eat? He took the cup after supper in the same manner. Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood for us. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. And thank you for sending the Holy Spirit as that deposit in our hearts. Jesus said this, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we drink? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. Let me pray for you real quick, and then we'll let you go home. Thank you, Father, for this people today that you've made right by faith in Jesus. But being justified by faith, they have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let them have a great week. Be blessed this week. Give them strength and energy where they don't have it. Make a way, God, when they don't see it. Make them happy when they don't have it, God. And we thank you for your blessing on them now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Bless you. Love you. Thank you for being here. Amen.
got friends down the street. If I'm so thankful, why do I easily forget? Oh, that you died for all of this when it should have been me.